what's up everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here i'm paris and i make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business lady simone candle co and in today's video i am going to talk about five mistakes to avoid when starting a candle business You all know the deal, I got my laptop here with my talking points, so let's just get started. When you're thinking about starting an at-home candle business, it's fun and exciting because you're like, wow, this is something that could be mine, something that I can own, something I'm making with my bare hands. I get to send to a customer to then fall in love with my fragrances, fragrances just as I have. But there are a few things that you wanna do at the beginning to ensure that your business has the best opportunity for success. So I am going to break down these five mistakes that you should avoid when you start. So for an at-home candle business, you want to have at least some type of practice before you begin. So if you've already been making candles and wax melts like as a hobby or let's say gift giving over the holidays, that's great because you pretty much already have and head start on what it takes to make batches of candles and wax melts um, before you even realize you want it to be a professional. But when you wanna take it to the next level and actually have an at-home candle business, that is gonna require and take more time to research and it presents more risk. So I would suggest to make sure you kind of give yourself a little bit exposure to not only candle making in and of itself, the actual craft, but I would suggest maybe reading up on some candle books. I did tons and tons of internet research. Um, join a few candle making Facebook groups if you can. Watch YouTubers such as myself and kind of expose yourself to not only the business side of starting a candle business, but the science behind actually making a candle. Begin doing some testing outside of just what you were doing which was just making candles and wax melts as a hobby when i first started i didn't realize how many wicks and different type of waxes and things that um, make up the final product so you want to kind of take off the hobby hat and put on the business hat and dig a little deeper when thinking about starting a candle business so now that we've talked about mistake number one, which is starting a candle business with no experience, moving into mistake number two, which is not having workspace or storage space. So when you start a candle business at home, you want to ensure that you have enough space in your home to accommodate your business. So for example, with candle making, you need space to actually make your candles, melt in your wax and things like that, whatever that whatever type of wax that may be. You also need space to store your candle making tools and supplies. So things such as your jars, your lids, um, your labels, your like warning labels and things like that, your stirring utensils, your wick holders, your oils, all that goes into actually producing a final candle. Those are your tools and supplies and you need a space to store that. You also need a place to actually work your business. So what I mean by that is, where are you going to look at your bookkeeping? Where are you going to kind of assess your sales? Where are you going to um, you know, update things like your website or prep your marketing campaigns and things like that? So even if it's just your kitchen table or your couch, both of which I use by the way, you wanna be able to have a kind of like a little setup to where you can have your laptop here, have your books here, and things like that to be able to actually do the work of the business behind your candle making. Lastly, you need a place to store your candles until orders come in. So now that your candles are done and they're ready to go, you need a place for them to cool and you know prep them for final ship out and then store them until orders actually come in. So once they're all done and ready to go, where are you going to place them? Um, so um, as you can see behind me, this is kind of my shipping supply area. So this is where I do all of my shipping because my printer is up here and I use that to print shipping labels and things like that. I actually have my candles stored downstairs in our little long um, council table. 
And so I have all of those stored in there as well as my wax melt. So they're cooling downstairs when orders come in. I do a few orders at a time, bring them upstairs, and I pack them and get them shipped. So I kind of have designated areas for where I store all of that stuff. So you want to ensure that you have places um, in your home to be able to accommodate all of what making an at-home candle business possible. Mistake number three that you want to avoid is not having done your research or having a business plan in place. So a solid business plan goes hand in hand with doing your research. So making candles as a hobby, like I said, it's fun, it's exciting. You're giving away things for your candles for gifts and such. But again, when you wanna take your candle business or your hobby, I should say, to the next level and be an actual business, that's gonna require some actual planning. So you need to do research such as where do you want to get all of your box supplies, things like your jars, your lid, lids, your wax. Um, for example, where do you wanna order your fragrance oils? Um, so you wanna do some research on vendors that are not only maybe in your home city, um, or even as close as you know the surrounding city, so in your state, um, you want to research all of that and figure out where your best deal will come from because shipping can be off the charts when it comes to ordering bulk candle supplies. So that is something that you want to look into when you want to start a full-blown candle business. Now, from a business standpoint, you also want to prepare your business by choosing a business name, of course, Lady Simone Candle Co., and you want to register your business with um, your city and your state. So you want to research um, your state and city um, regulations and laws in terms of starting a business and what all of that will require. Um, for example, Lady Simone Candle Co., I did register my business as an LLC, and I did everything through zenbusiness.com, which I will leave their link in the description box. And they handled everything for me. Um, I paid for a package, um, package deal, and they were able to get my business reg registered, get my business name all set up um, with my city and my state. I paid all the state fees that I needed to pay and they got everything set up for me, no hassle and no worry from me and they emailed everything to me kept in communication and then um, i can just log on my account on the website and get any documents that i need um, for my business so you want to ensure that you have that set up as well so make sure you're doing your research and what that may look like for your city and state mistake number four that you want to avoid is not having a clear direction on what type of products you want to offer. So deciding on a candle making business venture will mean you need to kind of figure out what type of products you want to offer. Um, so that will include, you know, what type of wax do you want to use as your candle line or your wax melt line? Do you even want to offer wax melts in addition to candles? Um, what type of jars do you want? Um, there's all different type of shapes and sizes of jars and lids. Um, what's the overall aesthetic of your um, candle line? What type of fragrances do you want to um, offer? Do you want to just, you know, do you want to do fruity and offer also, um, you know, woodsy type scents? Do you want to get into summery scent? You know, just you'll have to sit down and figure out what type of direction you want your business to go. So for example, if you've been making soy candles from the very beginning and you're efficient in making soy candles and that's where your strength is, then let that be your focus. If you like making soy candles and you have kind of practiced enough with soy to where you kind of mastered the science behind making soy wax, then stick with soy. So I would suggest um, sticking with what you know, sticking with where your strengths are until you're ready to expand and look into other type of product offerings for your business. Mistake number five, the last mistake that we're going to talk about today is not having a target market. Who is your target market? Who do you want your business to target? Who do you want to sell to? The one thing that you want to avoid is 
answering that question saying, oh, I wanna sell to everybody. I want everybody to have my candles. If you sell to everyone, that is not a target market and you're actually diluting your efforts. So you need to kind of pick a market to focus on and you know focus your branding efforts to that particular market. So for example, you got markets such as moms with young children, single men that may be a lover of candles. There's a lot of men that I know that loves candles. Um, if you wanna focus on just doing like, you know, um, events, you know, you wanna do corporate gifts or do you wanna do, you know, favors and things like that. So you wanna be more of the event, you know, supplier of gifts. Maybe you wanna focus on doing a very high end product line. So you focus on targeting the higher income individuals. So you kind of want to focus your attention on who do you want to target. So for example, for me, Lady Simone Candle Co., my brand is all about empowering um, self-care and taking care of your mental state. As a result of me battling postpartum anxiety after I had my son, so I wanted to focus my energy on taking care of myself, my mental state, so I can not only be a better mom, a better wife, but just a better me in general. So the words, the names of my candles are meant to empower women and um, help us kind of build our self-esteem back up and encourage ourselves and take care of ourselves. So my primary target is my target is women, but my focus is more so towards moms with children who have battled postpartum or any type of mental um, issue on that postpartum spectrum and how they can use my candles to um, as a pick me up and have some forced me time, which is what I had to learn and um, know that it's okay to take a break from your child and take a break from being a mom and taking off that hat. So that's kind of the target market that I wanted my candle line to focus on and um, target. So you want to sit down and really assess who do you want your brand to speak to? Who do you want to touch with your candles and the names of your candles? It can, and it can be anything. So really sit down, put your personality into it. Think, be creative and you know be unique because there's so many of us candle makers out here so you want to find a way to stand out and um be separate from the rest of us so i also wanted my mission to be you know to bring more awareness to postpartum anxiety because it's something that's not talked about a lot at all and so i felt like that would be a good way to not only focus as my target market, but also be a way to get involved with my community and give back. So I'm donating to um, an organization as well that helps moms deal with postpartum anxiety. So that is kind of where my focus is. So you want to make sure that's what your brand is speaking to. So whatever your market is, just ensure your branding and your business really touches that audience. So all you candle makers out there, you got this, you can do it. Um, make sure you do your research and ensure that this is something that you really want to do and something that you love and something that you have a passion for. So that is it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, bye.